TEPCO has compiled its version of what happened at the Fukushima Daiichi plant during the first five days after the March 11th earthquake and tsunami triggered the nuclear accident. The 50-page report is a detailed chronicle of the events that took place at the plant, centering on reactors 1, 2, and 3, as well as the utility's responses to the emergency. It includes photos of workers during a power outage in a central control room on the night of March 11th, trying to secure power for gauges using vehicle batteries. The document says because workers had to wear air cylinders and masks, it took nearly one hour to check the pumps in the number 2 reactor building. The work normally takes about 10 minutes. TEPCO says the report will soon be made public. A government panel has come up with a draft plan on compensating Japan's nuclear evacuees for their mental suffering experienced after the Fukushima accident. It's proposing that each person receive monthly payments of about $1,200 for the first six months. According to the plan, each person forced to evacuate by government order will receive the full amount for the first six months. The panel says mental suffering is at its peak during this period. Those deemed to be living under harsh conditions, such as in shelters set up in gymnasiums and community centers, will receive an additional payment of about $250 per month. In the second six months, compensation will be reduced to about half. The panel says the inconveniences to evacuees will be greatly reduced during this phase as they reestablish their lives. The panel has yet to decide what will happen after one year of payments. The electric power company says a damaged valve caused a water leak in a system for treating highly radioactive water building up in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The utility is rushing to restore the water treatment system, a key part of its plan to bring the situation under control. The system's final test run was suspended on Thursday after water was found leaking from a U.S.-made device that absorbs radioactive cesium. The device is one of the major components of the system. TEPCO found that an air ventilation valve in a container that is part of the device had been damaged. It also discovered that a water valve in another container was closed. It concluded that contaminated water inside the cesium absorption device had leaked through the ventilation valve. The company is now replacing the damaged part. TEPCO aims to resume the test run as soon as possible and start full-scale operation of the treatment system on Friday as it initially scheduled. The operator sees the system as essential to its efforts to reduce the amount of contaminated water accumulating in the plant. It's feared that the water could overflow in around 10 days without treatment. Tokyo Electric Power Company has begun decontaminating radioactive water at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The clean water will be cycled back into the reactors to help keep them cool. But TEPCO doesn't know how to finally dispose of the huge amount of condensed nuclear waste that's going to result from the decontamination. Water decontaminated on Friday will be re-injected into the cooling system on Saturday at the earliest. The recirculation is intended to prevent contaminated water from getting outside the plant. But the decontamination system is the first of its kind and largely untested. It's not clear whether it can meet the daily target of 1,200 tons of water, which includes seawater from the tsunami and water laced with oil. TEPCO wants to stabilize the system as soon as possible to prevent a further buildup of contaminated water. The company expects the system to produce at least 2,000 cubic meters of condensed nuclear waste this year. It's planning to store the waste in tanks for the time being, but doesn't have a final plan for disposing of it. The company needs to consult the government because existing laws don't specify how to process condensed nuclear waste. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has drawn up a revised plan that sets a target for cooling down the reactors. Measures to control workers' exposure to radiation were also added for the first time. Officials of the Tokyo Electric Power Company briefed the reporters on Friday. It was the utility's second monthly review of a roadmap that was originally released in mid-April. Under the revised plan, TEPCO says it hopes to cool to disable the reactors by decontaminating radioactive water and use it as coolant again. The utility says pools of spent fuel will also have to cool down to stable levels within a month. The revised roadmap features a new section on radiation control and improving working conditions at the plant. 
This follows recent revelations of workers being exposed to radiation levels above the government mandated safety limit. The new section calls for stricter controls on working hours, automatic recording of workers' exposure levels, and installing more equipment to measure internal exposure. TEPCO says it will also employ more doctors around the clock and increase the number of facilities for them to take a rest. The revised plan calls for further study on ways to prevent groundwater contamination at the plant. The utility says it will attempt to safely store radioactive waste that is produced during the processing of contaminated water. NHK has found that local authorities are skeptical about government guidelines on the handling of radioactive sludge. NHK surveyed 30 local authorities after the government announced the guidelines on Thursday. The guidelines cover the handling of radioactive sludge that's been found at sewage treatment plants since the crisis began at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They allow sludge with relatively low radiation of up to 8,000 becquerels per kilogram to be buried. But eight of the 30 local authorities said they cannot find suitable landfill sites. Three others said they don't know whether they can deal with the radioactive sludge in ways that put local people's minds at rest. Seventeen said they want the government to show concrete methods for disposing of the sludge, find suitable sites, and cover the costs. 本来あの処理場に溜めておくものではありませんので、早くですね最終的なあの方針を示していただきたいと思っております。All right, is there something in our water? There's been a recent spike in infant deaths in Philadelphia, and there's one expert right now who's saying it is radioactive levels in our water that's to blame for that. Remember the explosion at the Fukushima power plant in March after that earthquake and tsunami? Well, that radiation circled the globe, and it came all the way here to Pennsylvania, and about a month after that disaster, radiation levels spiked in our water at three of our Philadelphia facilities. But there could be a bigger problem than just the water. Let's check in right now with Sean Epp with the very latest on this one. Yeah, Karen, some people might call it a fluke. I actually think it's fascinating in the sense that uh, it's something to think about because it is serious if this proves to be true. A local researcher says radiation from Japan combined with higher levels of iodine, the EPA found in Philadelphia's water two months ago, may be killing young babies here. We're reporting Joe Mangano's research not to alarm or cause panic, but to inform. It's enough time to suggest, not to conclude yet. It's what the, the real benefit of this, it really is a red flag to be raised for more studies to be done. Still, the numbers are alarming. Number of infant deaths each week in Philadelphia has gone up 48 percent. Joseph Mangano is talking about a significant increase in infant deaths in Philadelphia. We've gone from average of five deaths uh, per week to, to seven and, and a half deaths per week. And what's even more thought-provoking is what he's attributing the deaths to. Japan, there's a meltdown. The huge amounts of radiation comes out of the reactors into the air. It floats across the Pacific Ocean, and within six days, it's here in the United States. Mangano is the executive director of the Radiation and Public Health Project, made up of scientists and health professionals. The great majority of infants who die in the first couple of weeks of life. And yes, you heard him right. He believes radiation traveling from Japan to the U.S. by air we breathe, getting into the rain and our food, enters our bodies. And in this case, Mangano says it's affecting particularly pregnant women without them knowing, until their newborn suddenly dies. It goes through the placenta and into the, into the fetus. And we know this, this is not a, a new, something new. We know this from years ago from the uh, atomic bomb test fallout. Where's the proof, you ask? Mangano looked at infant death data from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Here, it shows an average of five infant deaths a week in the five weeks leading up to the fallout in Japan. Then, for the ten weeks after Japan, there was an average of 7.5. That's a 48 percent jump. During the same time period, the rate of infant deaths for the whole country jumped just 2.3 percent. So, why the huge disparity? Mangano points to significant rainfall and iodine. The EPA data showed us that the um, levels in drinking water in Philadelphia were the highest in the country. Out of the seven highest uh, readings, five were in Philadelphia. Is this a fluke? Is this just some other reason? Yeah. We'll see. But we can't rule out Japan. It's too, too distinct. 
So Mangano also looked at numbers for the same time period dating back six years. Karen, they showed a decline in infant deaths up until, as we said, this year. I just find it so scary. I remember when it happened, I didn't even want my kids to play outside. What about women that were pregnant when this happened, who still may be pregnant right now? What can they, is there anything they can do? I mean, what should they know? Yeah, Karen, a great question. Uh, whether a doctor who will subscribe to this theory, it's best to just ask your doctor. Also, we should point out no autopsy information regarding these infant deaths and radiation is available right now. All right. I, you know, I just don't know what to think about it. It's such a scary situation. A lot Wash of people are be asking questions to their doctors. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for me. TEPCO has compiled its version of what happened at the Fukushima Daiichi plant during the first five days after the March 11th earthquake and tsunami triggered the nuclear accident. The 50-page report is a detailed chronicle of the events that took place at the plant, centering on reactors 1, 2, and 3, as well as the utility's responses to the emergency. It includes photos to be made public. A government panel has come up with a draft plan on compensating Japan's nuclear evacuees for their mental suffering experienced after the Fukushima accident. It's proposing that each person receive monthly payments of about $1,200 for the first six months. According to the plan, each person forced to evacuate by government order will receive the full amount for the first six months. The panel says mental suffering is at its peak during this period. Those deemed to be living under harsh conditions, such as in shelters set up in gymnasiums and community centers, will receive an additional payment of about $250 per month. In the second six months, compensation will be reduced to about half. The panel says the inconveniences to evacuees will be greatly reduced during this phase as they reestablish their lives. The panel has yet to decide what will happen after one year of payments. The electric power company says a damaged valve caused a water leak in a system for treating highly radioactive water building up in the... ...of workers during a power outage in a central control room on the night of March 11th trying to secure power for gauges using vehicle batteries. The document says because workers had to wear air cylinders and masks, it took nearly one hour to check the pumps in the number two reactor building. 
The work normally takes about 10 minutes. Tedco says the report will soon.